at what it must be like to actually go, you know, um, I'm leaving behind everything I know. I think what a lot of people don't understand is that the majority of the people who have been made to flee, they want to go home. It's all anybody wants to do is to go home. These camps are not full of people sitting saying, you know, oh, it'd be great to go to Europe or it'd be great to go to America or, or, or London or whatever. They actually just want to go home because it's all just like the most obvious thing in the world. They love where they come from. Take people who are in a very distressed and shocked uh, state, having abandoned their homes and made perilous journeys, uh, often uh, through very dangerous territories, and are exhausted and they're brought to Azraq. And by the time you arrive at that camp, you've lived a hand-to-mouth existence for weeks, maybe months. Got to meet a family who had only recently arrived, I think three days, and again was struck by their fragility and by the, you know, essentially tragic nature of this whole situation. And it was the first time I saw how clearly it was so much of the, the movement and, and the fleeing is about looking after your children when the fear is that it's unbearable for the children, that the adults move and they can take no more. I think parents will sacrifice their own happiness to give their children a chance. I just hate using this word refugee. The cliched images that that word throws up. It's almost like, I think when we see people, uh, refugees on TV, we, we sort of feel as if they've stepped out of, stumbled out of history as opposed to being people in this day and age who, just like you and I, have mobile phones and bank accounts. The things you need to exist in the 21st century, so that we were dealing with a, a crisis in the modern age. The work that UNHCR is doing shows great imagination. What do you see? Biometrics, iris scans, and cash support. One of the most surprising things was to see this new technology being used in order to uh, ensure that both the identities of the refugees could be accurately recorded and also that they could get access to much needed support uh, as soon as possible. I was incredibly impressed by the staff and by the ideas, by these mechanisms of caring, by these mechanisms of support. That UNHCR does it is fabulous. I just feel so humbled by the idea that the people are doing this as their life's work, figuring out how to deal with all this stuff, how to make it work. It's really impressive what human beings can do. They do awful, awful, terrible things. But God, they do wonderful things. Abu Ahmed, his two little children, came to take me up the steps into the house. They exuded a kind of a fun and lightness. Abu Ahmed said that his children had seen beheadings and it gave them nightmares, of course it did. He had polio and then added to this a shrapnel wound from an explosion. Awful. And yet there they were. They had survived with great dignity and had their goodness intact. These people would open the door you know, to other people. These people would help. They'd been through the most terrible experiences they remained generous in spirit. Well, that's what we have to try and understand, how much the same we all are. And that there are forces abroad that are everyone's enemy, people who are caught up in these terrible conflicts, deserve the dignity and the compassion that we would hope to receive ourselves. Because that's what you have to just keep reminding yourself is that we're just incredibly lucky not to be in that position.